Paulo Filios, 27, 5'8", 183 pounds, 4 and 0 in Pride Fighting Championships. Murillo Ninja! Murillo Ninja, who was 25, 5'11", 183 pounds, 6 and 5 in Pride. You can cut the tension in this building with a knife, a stare down to end all stare downs. There is no love lost between Shooter Box and Brazilian top team. And what about the metamorphosis of Murillo Ninja, who becomes the first fighter in pride to now compete in three weight classes, making his debut tonight at welterweight. Incredible. This, this guy got on a great cardio regime to get his weight down. He looks great. It's the best I've ever seen him as far as shape goes. One of the most anticipated fights of Bushido 10 is underway. Filio undefeated in his career. Ninja coming off a submission win over Murad Chankayev at Pride 30 in October 2005 and right away they go to the clinch. Greco-Roman clinch here with Ninja along the ropes. Mario Sperry calls Paulo Filio one of the most physically gifted athletes he's ever seen and that's saying something coming from Brazilian top team. You, you can see it. I mean, just look how strong he is. Look how big he is. He's just look at how he has a hold of the leg right now. He's attacking it, just getting after it, moving his feet. I mean, he did a great job. Oh, great takedown defense on, on uh, the, the part of a ninja. Wow, that was incredible to see. Whoa! And again, showcasing that power. And you talk about tenacity as the legs wrapped up. Ninja trying to slip through here, but a nice grip by Filio. But Ninja busy on the bottom. Arona, while Ninja was coming up, delivering some strikes. Back to close quarters they go, and uh, Trig, a lot of people refer to Filio as Little Arona. I don't know if little is the right word, but now at 183 pounds. Yeah, not anymore. He's not Little Arona anymore. He's, he's looking at him. He's, he's his own man now. There's no reason to call him Little Arona. He is definitely Filio on his own right. It's just amazing. Nice Bo knees up the middle there by Ninja. Both these guys. Oh, oh great headlock throw. Incredible headlock toss. And he's got him now. In the scarf position here, putting the pressure on Murillo Ninja. Well, the good news is you're not going to get hit from here because he has both hands tied up around the arm. He's what, in a scarf position. What's so the advantage of being in the scarf position for Fielder? What can he do from here? Control. There's a lot of arm locks he can do. This top hand right here. He can use his legs to pop this, tie up this arm if he chooses to. Um, every now and again against a lesser opponent, he might be able to get a get a, a tap out from here by squeezing the head hard enough. He won't get it from Ninja, of course, because we're talking two A-level high-class athletes. And I know for the hardcore fans, some of the questions may seem pedestrian, but the sport of mixed martial arts and pride fighting growing by leaps and bounds week in and week out. And that is why we like to address certain techniques and we're seeing two of their very best in mixed martial arts with Filio and Ninja back up to their feet. Oh, Ninja looking, you can tell, even I saw from here, from ringside, I saw he wanted to throw a big knee there and Filio did a great job of moving back and getting off his feet. Who would you give the advantage to in the stand-up? I mean, Shooter Box, they train all styles, as do Brazilian top team. But here, in this matchup, who would you give the edge to? Right now, the stand-up is definitely going to, to, uh, to Ninja as far as the stand-up goes, but he's not controlling the takedown game, so it makes no difference. He's completely being nullified because he's been taken down three times already. Filio, a black belt in judo, started training at age five, a former Brazilian judo champion, a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well, under the late Carlson Gracie, a three-time BJJ world champion, five-time Brazilian Brazilian jiu-jitsu two champs so we are seeing two of the very best on the ground as well and uh, the animosity that flows between these two camps going back to the 2005 pride middleweight tournament Ricardo Arona upsetting pride world middleweight champion Vanderlei Silva nice oh. kick here by wow. Pino. he's opening up now on ninja ninja turning the tables once again, Phil's doing a great job using his striking, using his striking ability to get back inside for that strong judo position, that strong Greco-Roman wrestling position, getting him right back down to the ground. In the finals of the Pride Middleweight Tournament of last year, it was Mauricio Shogun taking care of Ricardo Arona to win the title. And prior to the match, we saw Paulo Filio and Ninja in their respective corners displaying some, uh, let's say, less than flattering gestures. And that's what brought about this oh, fight. Oh, a slip. That wasn't a takedown. That was a slip. But... You know, it looks like Ninja's trying to, he's trying to overextend a little bit to fall, and fell down. You, know, you, you got to keep yourself in good position. Always have to remain in balance. Keep yourself rooted, as it were. And here with the 
open half guard, Filio should try to improve his position here as again, Ninja busy from the bottom to try to slip through the grip of Filio. Nice up kick right to the chest and a kick from Filio. And this could spell trouble there as I thought Filio was setting him up for some knee strikes. Filio was in a great position for those knee strikes, but after not to, now we're back on our feet again. And, and you got to take advantage of all times of every position. If you see, even if it's just one punch, one knee, one little thing, you have to take advantage of it at all times. Ninja misses with that right, and Filio comes in with a single leg takedown and gets the takedown. And really, Filio has been very successful with his takedown attempts so far in this fight. He's controlling the entire fight, controlling the pace of the fight, controlling everything right now with those takedown attempts. Every time a big right hand comes over or a big left hook, he just ducks underneath it and takes Ninja back down to the ground. Ninja trying to stave off the striking attack to Filio. And the referee, the senior official here in Pride Fighting Championships, Yuji Shimada, going to restart them in the center of the ring as we head to the midway point of round number one. Now it's side control, controlling the head. But you can see that Ninja tries to explode his hips, tries to gain the sweep here. He's got to get his hands back inside. He's doing a good job of getting his legs back. But you see how Ninja's elbow, his, his left elbow is up in the air. You need to get that left elbow between you and your opponent. That's what you have to use that left elbow for. Even though he is kneeing from the bottom, getting some small getting some small positions, he's in a really bad spot here. See, now he brings his left elbow in, right to the nice mount. I'm feeling did a great job switching to that mount. Excellent work. He's controlling. Filler's doing a great job of controlling. If you guys look at his hips, how he has him down low and tight, he'll be able to stay in this position for a very long time. Of course, Ninja looking to scramble underneath, but against a, a fighter with the physical attributes of Paulo Filio, going to be very hard to sweep him from here. Again, just controlling the head. Ninja, though, give him credit. Very tenacious on the bottom, trying his best. And there you see Mauricio Shogun and Hujamar Rodrigo in the crowd looking on. Good right hands here by Paulo Filio. The leg is there as well, Trig. He's doing a great job of, of controlling the entire fight by controlling the ground. And, and he's not giving much space. Even when he's punching, he's still very tight. A little peppering shots. <laughs> Not going to get a knockout from here, but we'll definitely get to a position where, where he'll be able to keep scoring points. Three minutes left in the round. Back into side control. Bafilio doing a good job of controlling on the ground, but not doing much to really improve his positioning or going for a submission. And let's face it, the number one criteria is the effort to finish the fight by knockout or submission. So while Filio is doing a good job of neutralizing Rulo Ninja, he needs to definitely dip into his vast arsenal of submission attempts. I can see it very, very soon here if he doesn't get a little more active nice on top. Oh, nice there. guard pass, incredible work. If he doesn't get a little more active here pretty soon, they're gonna start standing back up again, which is to Ninja's, to Ninja's benefit. Ninja's a BJJ brown belt. And right now doing a good job of defending from the bottom in terms of not allowing Filio any submission attempts, but Filio again just smothering him right now, working from side control, some short knees, Ninja kneeing from the bottom, but you're right. I think Yuji Shimada, the, the official, looking on the action is now it picks up a bit. But if not much more happens here, you're, you're probably right, Trig. They're going to bring them back up to their feet. You know, all these, these strikes that Filo's doing, they're, they're really not causing that much damage. So it, it's just a, just a position change, just enough to keep it on the ground, just enough to keep him in, in his side control position. Ninja's right arm is there. And of course, a lot of baiting tricks as well. 
Trig, and uh, talk a little bit about baiting. What could happen here to maybe give your opponent a false sense of security? Well, you have this nice tight side control. You give him a couple small light peppering shots to his face as he starts to push off, and you attack one of his arms for a submission. Or, or you, you hit him and force him to go to a different spot. Or in the reverse, you use a submission, a submission attempt to make him try to move into some more striking positions. Final 60 seconds of round one. Paulo Filio controlling the majority of this fight on the ground. But a very frustrating position, I'm sure, as we take a look at Mauricio Shogun, the 2005 middleweight tournament champion, rehabilitating the elbow injury. Filo's picking up the pace a little bit here, but as you can still see, he's really just trying to keep the position. He's really not looking to, to knock him out or really looking to hurt him. He's looking to, he's using those more almost as a setup for something else. It's still attacking that, that cross arm. Got the wrist now. There he looked to be going for an armbar attempt, but a good job by Ninja to come back to his feet, turning into Filio momentarily. But now, north-south position and some knees from Filio looking to go to Ninja's back, but Ninja doing a good job thus far of fighting off wow. that, but back to the ground they go, and Filio's strength very uh, evident here as he seems to be uh, the more powerful of the two. And let's not forget, Ninja coming down from Middleweight, 205 pounds. We saw him in the heavyweight tournament, even. An ill-fated uh, move there as he lost to Sergey Aratonov. But Ninja looks good at 183 pounds, but so far has been controlled by Paolo Filio. Filio's doing a great job just controlling the position, using the takedowns, get back to some replays here. As, as you can see, that's the headlock throw in the very beginning of the fight. It was amazing. Just just timed it. Great judo throw. And as, as Ninja started coming back up to his feet, he started striking. And immediately as he felt himself being in danger, Filio, he just took him back down to the ground. Excellent work to control the pace of the fight. That's how you control the fight, is making the man do what you want him to do to get in the spots he need to be to control his entire body. Last time we saw Paolo Filio was at Bushido, the tournament in September of 2005. He submitted Ryuta Sakurai via armbar in an alternate bout. As you see Shogun now giving his older brother instructions. So what do you think of the, the new looking um, Marillo Ninja thus far? Well, he looks good, but he's not doing a very good job of getting off the bottom, as we see here. This this is part of the fight, fight game. You've got to be able to get yourself off the bottom, get yourself out of the side control, at least get back to full guard. And here you see him eating some knees from the top as he spun over. Now they're not going to knock him out. He definitely knows how to take a punch and take a hit, but he's losing points the entire time. Immediately got back up. Filio did a great job doing body lock to a leg trip back down to the ground. Filio talked about wanting to impose his will in this fight, and thus far... Mission accomplished, but now we go into the second round. And again, in Bushido, one 10-minute round, one five-minute round. Everyone looking forward to this final five minutes between two bitter rivals from Brazil, Shooter Boxes, Murillo Ninja, and Brazilian top teams, Paulo Filho. And you can look for Ninja to try to keep this one standing, but again, being caught with that right hand as he blocked the takedown, and Filho now unloading on Ninja. He's coming. He's like a little, he's like a little red nosed uh, pit bull. Just keeps going. Oh, great lift! And another great takedown by Paolo Filio. Excellent. Cross straight. facing Ninja now goes, puts his right arm behind the head, dropping some short hammer fists as well. But again, it's what he does from this position now that's going to gain the judges' favor. Well, right now he's he's, he's got to be so far ahead in the scorecards. He controlled the entire first round. Um, at least in my opinion, and, and he's controlling it again with another takedown. He's doing a great job. Let me just strikes from the bottom from Ninja. Nice mount here by Paulo Filho. But give Ninja credit, just constantly scrambling. Now could be going for a he's in the Achilles position tender, a heel hook. Another guard pass from Paulo Filho. You know, this, this, is a, this is a classic matchup of the striker versus versus the grappler. The grappler's controlling because every time you go to throw a good punch, you have to be have your feet planted. It makes it easy to take him down to the ground. Of course, Ninja known for being a very accurate and punishing striker who loves to utilize his Muay Thai techniques, especially his brutal knees and tremendous leg kicks. Unfortunately for him and the shooter box corner, Paulo Filia has uh, stymied any attempt at those techniques whatsoever. Ninja trying to drive some elbows into the side of Filio. 
Nice a job there by Ninja to push Filio away, but again, Filio able to just blanket him one more time. Yeah, he really is. Just every time he gets any kind of position to be able to move, he just covers him up, smothers him again, like you said, with that blanket, and puts him right back down to the ground. But from this position here, again, it's all about the hip movement. There is the arm there. Ninja, I'm sure, going to be trying to look for a Kimura, possibly. Phil's got great hip position, stifles it, gets his hand back on top and gets out of that. Now, I look to pass out of this out of this half guard as you, as you see him trying to do right now. The arm is right there. There he's trying to go for an arm lock as Ninja from the bottom. As we have crossed the two minute plateau of this, the second round, three minutes remaining. Another pass by Filio into side control. It, the, the position that Filo's in, he does have a chance to do a, a Americana or a Kimura from the top side. He doesn't really look to be, to be trying to finish anything, though. He looks to be very comfortable just sitting in the side, controlling the match. He really only has about two and a half minutes left as we get to the middle point to try to, to, try to finish this and get the victory in this, in but this fight. But this isn't sport jujitsu. I mean, points are important. You win favor with the judges. But again, Bushido especially, mandate is on sustained action. Wait. Willing to finish your opponent by submission or knockout. And you're right, I mean, it's been a dominating performance from Paulo Filio. But we haven't seen much in the way of submission attempts. Well, as we, as we go down the criteria, you know, the, the, the effort to try to finish your, your opponent by KO submission, neither one of them has had any shot. And not necessarily a lot of damage either, right. though. Yeah. It's been yeah. all about the takedown. Yeah, so that really went on. That's the deciding factors. Who's been on top longer? And you can hear Marilla Bustamante imploring him to attempt the Americana because he feels that it's there for the taking. Merle Bustamante, again, a co-founder of Brazilian top team, keeping track of the time. A minute and a half remaining. You can hear the shouts of encouragement from the Brazilian top team corner right in front of the broadcast area here at the Ariake Coliseum, and Filio continues to just control Ninja on the ground. You know, and really, you know, he's, he's going to hold on for the win, it looks like here. He's really not going to attempt any submissions, but he did a great job. He controlled the entire fight. Um, you know, I'm a one that's a little bit, I like aggressiveness a little bit more. I prefer to, to attack a little bit harder. But, you know, if I was the official, I'd probably step, stand him up right now and see what else happens. But he, he's is, doing an excellent job. Into the final minute of the fight. Trig, is this a letdown for you, or is this just a case of where Paulo Filio, who is undefeated in his MMA career, is showcasing the skills that got him to this point and is proving that he is indeed a force to be reckoned with at welterweight. This is this is Paulo's style. This is how he fights. He loves to control the top game, loves to take guys down, loves to be in control the entire fight. And he obviously, we've seen it. He's done it. This is how he fights, and so you can't take anything away from him. Is, with the arm trapped right there now from Ninja, isn't there an opportunity for him to put pressure on the arm. Again, Filio controlling from the top, but there are some arm lock attempts that were there for the taking by Ninja, and he, he didn't seem to go for it. He really doesn't have the position. He's just too too far away, too far gone, and just doesn't. his hips are just too far underneath to be able to get any good position. 10 seconds left in the fight, and a stifling strategy for Paulo Filio. Looks like it is going to pay off. Fans ex expected fireworks. Instead, we get a dominant performance from Paulo Filio smothering Murillo Ninja. And you can see the dejection from the shooter box fighter. Not aesthetically pleasing, but in the same sense, Paulo Filio, like you say, stuck to his tried and true methods. And uh, he may be en route to a victory here as we revisit some of the action. Yeah. Just throwing for the fence at this point, Ninja is, and that's what caused the takedowns to be so easy because he was so, did not want to go to the ground because he got held down for so long that he made it very easy for Paulo Field to step in and big, nice, powerful and lift to take down to the ground. Really did a good job of securing the takedowns, and then, as we mentioned, you see there Ninja struggling from the bottom, eating a couple of right hands. None of those are going to do any kind of damage. They're not going to be able to cut anybody. They're not going to be able to knock a guy out, but they were backing up and racking up points. Let's go to the judges to find out who wins the Battle of Brazil. He remains perfect in pride fighting championships at 5-0. and oh, A jubilant Paulo Filho. Scores the unanimous decision win over Murillo Ninja. Final thoughts on the fight trick. Great job by Paulo controlling the takedown every time he thought himself to be in danger. Good sportsmanship there from Hujamar Rodrigo. Sorry, 
It's a, who, who, by the way, is not his coach. He, he competes for the other. He's a trainer in the, in the and basically the father figure for the entire Shoot the Box Academy. And that's why um, it was nice to see that gesture. Go I mean, ahead, sorry. The, these guys, these two teams, it, it, you know, they, they, they rival each other, but there's mutual respect for both guys. Well, that's that, what MMA is all about. You know, Paulo Field did a great job of controlling the pace. Whenever he was in danger, he took him down. Whenever he thought he had a chance, he thought, used his strikes to get him back down on the ground. His technique and his style, you know, may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but it definitely gets the job done, and he controls and manhandles every single person that he competes against. Anything that Ninja could have done from that position, I mean, again, give credit to Paolo Filio, a powerhouse, uh, very good at controlling from the top, but uh, Ninja did attempt to try to reverse, did attempt some sweeps, but it was, it was hard to get anything started from where he was throughout the fight. Yeah, the entire fight, he was kind of always on the side, kind of always in a, in a very disadvantage, and, and he really couldn't get his, his, his bottom game working to any positive force. So is Paolo Filio a candidate for the welterweight tournament coming up June the 4th? You know, his style and his technique would be a great. I, I, if he makes it all the way through to the, to the third round where, where you got to fight two times in one night, his style and his technique, you see he doesn't get hit very much. He doesn't get beat up and battered. Paulo Field would do a great job in that welterweight tournament. Dan Henderson, the current Pride welterweight world champion. But 16 of the world's best welterweights will begin the quest to win the welterweight tournament title June the 4th. It's Bushido Survival 06 and a victorious Brazilian top team making their way back to the dressing room as Paulo Filio leads the way, a perfect 5-0 and in pride. You know, I really do like Paulo's style. I really like how he's aggressive about getting the takedown. Of course, I'd like to see a guy throw some more strikes when he's on his feet, but he doesn't have to because that's how he wins his fights, and he wins them decisively.